Thank you. Thank you, Pastor John. It's a privilege to be here with you guys tonight. Uh, you know, it's always, it's always a little bit intimidating to, to speak in public. I think that's one of our greatest fears. But, but you know, I, I know you guys are my family and my church, and I love you guys, and I know you guys love me. <laughs> and, and, you know, if I could go door to door and knock on strangers' doors, you know, and I don't know who's going to answer. And honestly, sometimes when those people answer, they, they don't want me there. They, they, they want you to leave now and they let you know that. And if I could do that, I, I could definitely come up here and tell you guys that I love you guys and, 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 share, and share a little bit with you guys, right? And Pastor John asked me to do that, so I'm glad I get to do it. So uh, most of you guys know me from New Life already. I don't know uh, uh, the ones that just go to Harvest uh, Church here. I don't know you as well, but I hope to get to know you. Um, let's see, uh, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm married, my wife is Linda. She's way back there in the corner. And I have three boys, and uh, I'm just blessed. I'm so blessed. Um, uh, I'll give you a little bit of my testimony. I was saved as a child, as a, a little kid. Uh, my parents, uh, being Hispanic, we started out Catholic. And uh, so the Catholic Church uh, is, is, is just really uh, taken, uh, is really what uh, Mexico and Central America has a lot of, is the Catholic Church. And so, you know, that probably came over from Spain. And uh, anyways, they were Catholic, but uh, when I was a kid, they, they uh, started going to charismatic meetings within the Catholic Church, and that caused them to start reading the Bible on their own a little bit more, and uh, eventually realized that, that they wanted to, uh, to, to know God more in a different church, and they started going to Assemblies of God and praise God for that. My dad became a minister and taught me uh, a lot about being a Christian by example and by, uh, you know, reading the Bible to us and so on when we were kids. So I was saved as a kid. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in my closet because that's the way God wanted it. it you know, I, I saw people get baptized in the spirit of our church and I saw them being slain in the spirit and I would go up and I did go up and I had people pray over me and lay their hands on me and it just didn't happen for me that way. Uh, but I, I was home and I took coach's advice. You know, coach, he said, find your place in the garden. He says, I, you know, he, he, he prayed in his garden at the time. And uh, so my place was in, in the closet. I have a walk-in closet and I was in there praying and God, God touched me and I started speaking in tongues and it was awesome and my life has never been the same. I, I, uh, my, I, I believe you're saved way before you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. I believe that in order to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you, you have to be born again. And, uh, and so if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, it, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely something we need because that's where we have the power to go out and, and witness for God and, and live the life that that's the, that's the power, you know, that we get. It's, it's uh, in uh, Acts 1.8. He says, you shall receive power, and that's, that's the power that he's talking about, is the Holy Spirit, and then the Spirit gives us all the gifts, and, and uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? I'm going to, a little, that was just basically, I wanted to tell you my testimony. I was a Catholic. I was saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, in new life, and I've been there for a lot of years, lost track of how many years I've been there, over 20 years, probably. And uh, I, I remember Pastor Hood a little bit, but I really remember Pastor Al, of course, and then Pastor John. And it's just been awesome getting to know Pastor John. You know, one of the things when we go out door to door is that I get to go with Pastor John, and that's such a privilege to me because I get to talk to him and get to know him. And man, we talk about life, we talk about God, and, and uh, it's just so wonderful. It's such a blessing when you get together with other Christians in general. But, but uh, being with Pastor John has really blessed me, and, and he teaches me, and I take the opportunity to ask him stuff, and it, it works out pretty good for me. So uh, I, I'm going to read a little bit out of the book of Romans. So I'm going to read out of Romans 8. Romans 8 is a powerful, powerful book in the Bible. And uh, I'm going to pray over the word just for a minute, you guys. And thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, God, that you gather us here tonight, Father. I pray your blessing over this people, this, our church, Father. I pray that you anoint them, that you anoint their hearts and their ears, God, that you anoint me, Father, that I would be able to, to speak your word, Father, the way you want me to, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, here we go. So in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse, I'm going to start in verse number 4. It says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For to those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit... And we're going we're gonna to read some more, but, uh, you know, it, it's so important that we understand that once we get born again, we are no longer to walk in the flesh. And, and, and I, I know I'm talking to Christians here tonight, so, you know, this, this what a lot of times when we read our Bible, uh, we, we will over, we'll just read it and, and not stop and, and really let it sink in. And, and this is such a spiritual, such a spiritual meaning to me because, because if you don't read it, if you, if you don't read it with the Spirit of God discerning, telling you what it says, you'll read right over it and just keep going. And, and you know, the Bible was written to the sons and daughters of God. It was written to us who are born again. If you're not born again, you're not going to understand this and you're not going to know what he's saying because you're carnal. So it, it's... It's so important that, that we get it, that we get it in the spirit, that we don't understand it in the flesh. You know, Pastor Al once preached a sermon, and, and he said that the old man is never so dead that he can't be awakened at a moment's notice. And, and it kind of bugged me a little bit. I'll tell you guys, I never told him that. <laughs> I think I told Pastor John that. But... <laughs> But it, the, it, it stirred me up a little bit because I, I didn't like it. it didn't, I didn't like that, but he's absolutely right. You know, it is, it is a battle, and the battle is to live in the Spirit because the flesh wants to live in the flesh. It wants to live out of, a, out of the senses that the flesh was born with. It wants to live out of your, what you see, what you taste, what you hear, what you feel. That's our default state. That's what we will go to if we don't fight to stay in the spirit. See, it's not natural to live in the, in, in, in the supernatural, and God is supernatural. So if we're going to be in communion with God, it has to be in the supernatural. It has to be in the spirit. So that's the battle that we're fighting. And when the old man tries to get back up, we have to put our foot on him and say, no way, not here, not today, because I'm born again. I belong to Jesus, and I'm going to live in the Spirit. You know, in Matthew chapter 11, I believe, it, it, it says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is inside of us. We don't look here. We don't look there. We look within us. That's where the kingdom of heaven is. And the kingdom of heaven suffers violence because, because that's the enemy attacking us through the flesh. He'll, 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 he'll push the button at the right time. He'll, you know, and we all, we're all, we all struggle with it. It's don't feel like, oh, uh, he, you know, Leo must be perfect, so he gets to tell us this. Not at all. We all struggle with it. It is a battle for us to do that. You know, our, our wives and our husbands, they'll say the right thing at the right time that'll just mess you up. And, and you know, it's not an accident. It, we're, in a, we're in a battle. We're in a war. We really are. So, but, but we have been equipped with the power. And, and honestly, the only thing the enemy has is, is lies. Because he's get, see the truth makes us free, so it only makes sense that the enemy is going to attack the truth. You know the truth is that that God loves you, and that he he's not he he he's not the one that uh, sets you up to fail, but the enemy does, and he, and the enemy's going to use people. He's going to use your spouse or your kids or your family, the people that around you the most that you love the most. 
So don't, so be, let's be aware of that and let's live in the spirit. Don't let your feelings get the best of you. Don't, don't let your flesh decide who you are. Let Jesus in you decide who you are. That is a challenge to do that. And, it, and I'm going to read a little bit more. You know, I, I'm not a preacher really, but I could read. So I figure if I read the Bible for two hours, he gave me the mic, so I, I don't know. I might do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to le- read a little bit more in chapter 8, and then we're going to move on to Galatians. Let me see. I wrote it down here. We're going to move on to... Uh, It's Galatians 5.22, I believe. But we're going to read, first we're going to read in a little bit more in chapter 8. So it says, For to be carnally minded, verse 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. See, if we do this in the flesh, it won't work, because your flesh cannot please God. We cannot please God in the flesh. Can't do it. So we have to do it in the spirit. spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of, of Christ, the spirit of Christ, he is not his. What it's saying is, if you're not born again, I don't believe he's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit here. He's, he's talking about being born again. If you're not born again, you are not his. Okay, so, so we got to get born again. Now, once we accept Christ, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the life that we now have in our bodies, the reason, see, our bodies cannot live with, without a spirit. What spirit you have in you, that's up to you. Before we were born again, we had an evil spirit. We have the spirit of, our, our, of, of the devil. Human beings, by nature, by default, we were, because of Adam, are sinners. And without Jesus, we have the spirit of the devil in us. That's our nature. That's our carnality. That's what comes out of us. You know, that's, that's the way we're born. We have beautiful babies right now in our church, little sailor and little Stetson, and they're so precious, and they're so innocent, and, you know, they're absolutely, right now, they're absolutely holy, God loves them, and they are not in sin, because they haven't reached that age where their conscience will let them know that they're in sin. We all start out that way, but by nature, nobody has to teach us to lie or to cheat or to steal, that happens naturally. That's, how, that's what we're born with. That's the spirit that we're born into. And until we make a decision on our own to change, God won't do it until you say, yes, Lord, I am willing. And when that happens, you get a new life. The life that, the, the reason why your bodies are alive, and alive now is because the spirit of Christ is in you. Our bodies cannot live without a spirit. We've all seen those old movies, even the world knows that, where the person dies and the, a, a shadow of a body leaves their body. You know, that's because everybody knows we need a spirit, but we need the spirit of God, not the spirit of the enemy, the devil in us. So, so praise God that we're all born again. I, I hope that we're all born again here, because if, if, if you're not born again, you can get born again tonight. That's the, that's the, mar- the great thing, is that, that all it takes is a decision, and, th- and you'll have the opportunity to do that tonight. So I'm going to read out of Galatians uh, 5.23 now, because Galatians 5.23, or, uh, yeah, it, it, dis- it tells us the difference between living in the spirit and living in the flesh even more clearly. 
see if I can find it real quick here. Let's see, it's uh, yeah, Galatians. It's actually Galatians five five nineteen. It says now. The works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's where we come from, you guys. And I know some people might say, well, I wasn't that bad. And I'll tell you guys, I, I, I was a good kid for the most part growing up. My dad was very strict. And I behaved because I was afraid of my dad. But inside, I was rebellious. And I was doing everything I could get away with because God didn't live in me until I was born again. That's when it changed. If, if, so, so if you're not born again, those are some of the things that you're living in. That's, that's just the way it is. And, and now once you get born again, here's the fruit of the Spirit. Oh man, I lost my place. Okay, if, once you get born again, here's the fruit of the Spirit. Now this is the fruit of the Spirit. These are not the gifts, this is the fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So that is what's going to happen once you become born again. You're going to have fruit. And the fruit is going to be love and peace and joy. You know, I'll tell you what, as, as, as a born-again uh, Christian, that is so powerful that we could be in any situation, that we could be going through whatever we're going through, and that, that, we could, that we could call out to Jesus, that we could say, Jesus, I need peace, I need joy. And you know what? He'll give it to you right there. Because that's, that's what he does. He wants to do that. He's just waiting for us to ask him to do it. Isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome. So, you know, live in the spirit. Don't, don't live in the flesh. And it's such a clear distinction to me. It didn't used to be, but the more I read his word and the more I listen to, to God, the, the more clear it becomes to me the difference between living in the flesh and living in the spirit. You know, we are a spiritual church. The assemblies have got very spiritual church. We had, this morning at, at New Life, we had somebody give a prophecy in tongues. That's one of the gifts of the spirit. In the flesh, it sounds like gibberish. It sounds like, what are they doing in the flesh? right? But, but in the spirit, it makes sense. But if you're just there, if you're not a Christian and you're sitting, imagine that, guys. If you're, just, if you're not a Christian, you're sitting in church, and somebody ha starts speaking in tongues loudly, our flesh rejects that. Our flesh says, that is crazy. We better get out of here. But, but see, that's what our flesh does. Once you have the spirit of God in you, you realize that we live in the spirit, and and so it makes sense to us now. It, has, it, it makes sense to us. This whole, this whole word, this whole Bible, every gift in it, all the fruit of it, it's all spiritual. It, it, he is a spiritual God. If we don't live in the Spirit, we won't understand the Bible. It'll be a book that's just written to somebody, and it's not. It's written to, it's written to His children who live in the Spirit. It's, in, it's being in the Spirit that it causes us to understand His Word. So before you read this Word, you, you know, pray. Say, God, give me understanding in your Spirit. Help me to know what you're talking about in, in your Word, because if not, you'll, you'll be lost. You'll be confused. And He, he just blesses us so much. Uh, he, when God looks at us, because we're born again, He looks at us as, as we're just awesome kids. He doesn't look at us like old sinners, like we're just, you know, dirty, rotten kids. He thinks we are awesome. When we gather together like this, like we're gathered here tonight, we may not be the best worshipers, the best singers, but to God, he thinks we're awesome. 
He, he thinks we are precious. He, because of the blood of Jesus, we have righteousness. We have righteousness. Let me read a little bit more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read out of Romans, still out of Romans 8. We're going to move over to, to verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. He foreknew you guys. He predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son, to look like Jesus, that he might be the firstborn born among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also glorified. Whom he justified, he justified and he also, and he also glorified. He justified you just as if you had never sinned. He justified you. He cleansed you. You know, we sing these awesome songs. We got to believe it. We got to live it. You know, that, that second to last song, I was looking at the words, so powerful, so powerful that hell will tremble when we gather together. That's what the words were saying. That's, that's you know, we got to live what we sing because those are powerful words. You, when you get up in the morning, I'll tell you, God should be the first thing on your mind because it's a brand new day. And if we allow our mind to wander, we'll start getting in all kinds of trouble. Start thinking about all kinds of things. Focus your mind and, and let God direct your path. Let God put the thoughts into your mind when you begin the day. And you know what? The devil should be afraid when you wake up. The demons should report back to the devil and say, he's awake now or she's awake now. We're in trouble. Because on that day, you gotta, you, you got to take a, the, the offense. you got to be after it. Don't be a passive Christian. Don't wait for something to happen before you actually start praying. It's, it's, see, we don't go to battle. We don't go get ready and then go, you, you got to be ready. Pastor Al has preached about this so many times. We have to be ready for war. Every day is a war. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. We got to take it. We got to take it. It's our inheritance. It's who we are. We are the children of God. Listen to verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. The inheritance that Christ got, we get. Not different. It's the same inheritance. Jesus said... Follow me and forget about everything else and follow me. And it, it wasn't a joke. He, was, he, he said it because we could do it. He said it because he came as a man. If he didn't come as a man, we couldn't follow him. But because he came as a man, we could follow Jesus. We could do what he did if we live the life that he wants us to live. He's, gonna, he's the one that's going to help us anyways. When you pray for somebody that's sick, don't worry about what you're doing because it's not you doing it. You're just being obedient. God is just using your hands. That's, that's all. And he's the one healing them anyways. Isn't that awesome? So, so that, that's what needs to encourage us. Uh, you know, we had uh, baptisms this morning, and we had communion this morning at New Life. And, you know, I just wanted to say a little bit about that because, because th those things that we do, that we, that we do when we... Um, we obey God and we get baptized and we take communion. Those things are, they confirm who we are in Christ. They don't necessarily save us. We do those things because he lives in us and we're obedient to him. And that's important to understand that, that those, those things are confirming. When we pray, when we fast, he is, that is because he lives in us. It's a confirmation of who we are, that we are his children. Look at, look at uh, in, in chapter 6, in Romans chapter 6, he says, it, this is about, about baptism, That's, and I wanted to touch on the baptism. Okay, uh, therefore, well, let's go up to verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in newness of life. Now that really describes baptism to me, that we die to our flesh and we're born again and we're raised up out of the water, like Pastor John said, unto Christ. We have a new life 
in Christ. And that is so awesome. Those seven people that got baptized today, man, that just that that whole service was just awesome for me. Just watching uh, people being obedient to Christ. That that's life. That, that's life. That's what it's all about. That's why we gather together as a church so we could do that. You know, we can't do that on our own. If, if we think we, we could be Christians by ourselves, we're, we can't. And, and I know there's exceptions. There's, there's people that can't make it to service, and that's why we put it, on, put it on YouTube. But really where it's at, the power of the gospel happens with the church. That's where it happens. So we cannot, and you know, we live in, in these times that are so uncertain with the election coming up. We, we don't know what's going to happen in our country. And, you know, we live in a blessed country, but, but it's scary some of the things that are going on when you really think about it. And it's even more important now than, than ever before that we don't think that we could do it on our own and stay home and say, I'm just going to watch it on YouTube Come to church, stay, you know, in, in Hebrews 10, he says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. Come together, stir each other up, exhort each other. And, and, and it's because, especially like I said in these times, when, when, when it's uncertain and when it's scary, that's when we could help each other and pray for each other and lift each other. Uh, that's, that's so important to do that. You know, Hebrews, Hebrews 10, it says that, and... Yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys, how, how important it is to gather together. And uh, the Bible, Jesus instructs us to do that. And, and that's, that's where our strength comes from, is each other in Christ. So.